The next step in the Storyteller build-out, the rear carriers. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. I am up here in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado today and we are going to take a look at what I have done to the back end of my Storyteller Classic. Now for starters, one of the reasons I opted for the Classic version as opposed to the Stealth or the Beast mode is because obviously I wanted to do these modifications on my own so I get exactly what I want out of this van. The Stealth mode and the Beast mode obviously come optioned with rear carriers and I knew it wasn't exactly what I wanted. So with the classic version, I'm starting with a blank slate and there was absolutely nothing on the back of this van. This makes my process of modifying this van exactly how I want it a lot easier because I don't have to fill any holes. I do have to drill some new holes. But overall, it just makes the process easier. I don't have to sell the carriers that I'm taking off of here. It's a blank slate, and I have exactly what I wanted on the back of this van now. So the products that we're taking a look at are, of course, coming from Owl Vans. Since I have been dabbling in the Sprinter Van game, Owl has really made a name for themselves. Back when I got my first Sprinter, they weren't really around all that much, and now you see their products absolutely everywhere, which I love. There's a reason why so many people run Owl products on their vans, and we are going to dive into that right now. Let's start with the left side. So right here on the driver's side door, we have the new aluminum Owl Expedition tire carrier. And before we dive into what makes this thing so great, you will notice my wheel and tire choice mounted on the back here. I'm going to give you guys a lot more information about this wheel and tire setup because I'm now running new suspension on the Storyteller. We'll talk about all of that stuff in a video probably next week. But for now, you're getting sort of a sneak preview here of what I'm running. And you're probably wondering how I fit a combo like this on the van because it's pretty large. So for the wheel, these are also made by Owl and these are known as the Talon wheels. When I saw Owl release these wheels and I saw that they named them the Talon, I knew I had to have them at some point in the future. Not just for the name, but actually I really dig the aesthetics of these wheels too. They are offered in three different colors. I opted for the graphite gray version. And there are a lot of cool features about this wheel which are specific to Sprinter vans. A lot of times when you see companies out there creating wheels for for Sprinter vans, they're essentially taking a truck wheel and changing some dimensions, changing the bolt pattern to allow them to fit onto a Sprinter van like this. Now, as you guys know, a lot of these vans are off-road quite often. They are used and abused, and you really need a dedicated wheel for an adventure rig like this if you want to do it properly. So these Owl Talon wheels were designed specifically for the Sprinter van. They have a huge capacity load. This is a 17-inch wheel with a positive 30 offset. And one thing that is really cool is that you'll notice that there are two valves on here. Being that this is my spare tire up top here, I just added a normal valve that I can inflate and deflate the tire from. However, since there are two down here, you will notice this on all of the wheels on the van right now. When ordering these wheels, they give you the option to pick up an apex quick deflating valve. I've done full videos about airing up and airing down tires in the past, and this is going to make my life so easy because these tires are so big. I'll give you guys a quick demo of how this works, but these apex valves deflate tires insanely fast. And as of right now, I don't have onboard air on the van, so I'm just gonna give you guys a real quick demo here. So if I unscrew the cap here, it does sort of have a leash on here, so you're not gonna lose your caps. And if you see these valves outside of the tire and wheel, you will notice how quality these things are. There's a lot of engineering that went into these. So now when I'm ready to air down, like I said, I'm only gonna do this really quickly because I don't have onboard air, but... You lift this pull valve here and the air just like explodes out of here. So you can air down your tire extremely quickly. And then when you are down to your desired pressure, simply screw your cap back on and then you're good to go. Since you have two valves on this wheel, you can air up wherever you see fit and haven't used those yet. Once I have onboard air on the Storyteller, definitely gonna be using those quite a lot. Now for my tire choice while we're back here, I wanted to try something new. This is a fairly new tire coming from Toyo Tires. And these are the Toyo Open Country RT Trails. 
There isn't a whole lot of testing with these tires out there right now because the tire is pretty dang new. However, I've already put about a thousand miles on these tires and so far I am really enjoying them. Now for the size of these tires, I am running a 285-75-17, which is a pretty huge size for a Sprinter van, but it actually looks very proportionate to the rest of the vehicle. Having a larger tire size makes off-roading a lot more smooth and comfortable, especially when I can actually air these things down. They've been great in mud, sand, and snow so far. I'm curious to see how the wear pattern will be on these. I'm hoping they will last me maybe 20, 30,000 miles. I'm not exactly sure how the compound is going to be, but I will report back in some future videos when testing this thing off-road and putting a lot of miles on these tires. So that is the wheel and tire combo. Now let's talk about how this thing is actually mounted up on this Expedition Carrier. This Expedition Carrier is definitely one of the lightest and strongest in the industry right now. The new carrier features an all TIG welded aluminum frame, keeping this thing super light. I believe it weighs about 20 pounds. And they're utilizing the same structure points and mounting points that have made OWL carriers the most reliable and easiest to install in the past. You will notice that they are using the factory hinges here as a mounting point, and then across to the other side, you're using just one mounting point that is further away from the hinges. You're not drilling a hole directly through the middle of the door with like a little articulation point. And without nerding out about this stuff too much, the reason why this design works so well is because the door can function and open as normal. You do have rubber stoppers on here so the tire's not gonna fly into the side of your van. And also when you close this door, because of the way this thing is mounted, it is almost putting tension on the whole aluminum frame. And there are absolutely no rattles, wiggles out of this Thing. the tire does not bounce when you're off-road. It is just one of the most solid tire carries that I've seen and that's why after doing a bunch of research and traveling in my previous Sprinter for so long, I realized that this is how I wanted to go. Now for getting the tire mounted up here, you will notice that there is sort of a basket cradle underneath here. That way you don't have to hold a super heavy tire and wheel combo up like this and then try to position it onto lugs and get lug nuts in place. There's one piece of all thread here which mounts to the back of the frame. It comes through the center cap of the wheel and then you're essentially using this giant wing nut here with a rubber spacer in the middle which has some contours to it. It's sort of conical that way when you are threading this thing on. It sort of self-centers and it is not going anywhere. You'll notice in the center here of the all thread that there is a way to throw a padlock through there or any kind of locking system if you want to make sure this thing is secure. I haven't gotten around to buying a lock to do that yet but I definitely will in the future. So now when you're lifting something like a 90 to 100 pound wheel and tire combo up here, it is very easy to just throw it into the basket. With that wing nut and spacer on there, it basically self aligns and it is just one of the cleanest and easiest ways to get a rear tire installed. Now, why do you want your spare mounted on the back here? One, it just looks really cool, but also there's a lot of functionality behind it. The spare tire typically mounts underneath the back of the Sprinter van here. You have to drop the cage with two bolts. If you get a flat and you need to change your tire in an area like I'm in right now, it's sandy and there's snow everywhere. It's pretty cold out here. A lot of times if you're on a trail, it's almost impossible to get the tire out from underneath the van. And also a wheel and tire size like this would not even fit in the stock location, so Back here, you're showing off your cool investment of a really nice wheel and tire combo. Makes your life way easier when you actually do have to change your tire. You're not messing with lug nuts. You simply crank that off, get the new tire installed, and then throw your spare over here. So far, absolutely loving the Expedition Carrier. Now let's move on to the passenger side of the van. So over here on the passenger side door of the van, this is a setup that I probably should have had in the past because this is basically acting like external storage, kind of like a garage for all your muddy tools and whatever junk you don't wanna have inside of the van. There are a few things here, so initially we're starting with the Owl B2 carrier. These carriers are gonna be good for obviously mounting up boxes like this right here, but also you can mount a bike carrier like a one-up to the top here, and it's pretty versatile with all of the mounting points on it. Since I have enough space in my garage inside the van for bikes, right now I'm currently running a mini Sherpa carrier up here, which gives me a ton of mounting points and on that i have an agency six shovel for kind of like recovery emergency situations the reason i really like this shovel compared to one of the ones that i was using in the past is that it is aluminum tig welded and it does not make any noise at all the mounting point on here is super strong and secure there are no moving pieces when it comes to a shovel like this and you may think a tiny little shovel like this looks kind of gimmicky with a large vehicle like this but let me tell you 
they work. If you get a tire buried in snow or sand, whatever it may be, instead of using something like Max Tracks and recovery boards to dig your way out, having a tool like this on board really goes a long way. You will notice there's a lot more mounting points up here on the mini Sherpa and I could do things like roto packs. I could mount roto packs or an ax or shovels all around this carrier. But as of right now, this is my setup. And once I actually start using this thing, when I'm using recovery gear and other tools while I'm off-road, this whole area might evolve. So also mounted on the B2 carrier, you will notice right here, I have the large owl box. Again, mounting points all over this thing. You could drill through the side if you wanted to permanently fix something there. I see a lot of people putting roto packs on there. I luckily don't need to do that now with my upgraded SMB tank. And I purposely left the whole back of this van dirty for a reason so I can show you guys how weather sealed this box is. This box has been on here for a few thousand miles now. It's been in the snow, it's been off road, it's been rained on. And if I open this thing up, simply flip this latch here, it does include a key if you wanna lock this box and also a padlock pass through if you wanna lock this thing just like the tire. Turn the handle. Hydraulics open this door up. And now I have a huge box here, which as you can tell is completely clean. I'm surprised there's actually not any dirt in here at all because the back of this van is just disgusting right now. I don't have a ton of gear in here right now because I am still traveling fairly light as I'm building out this van while I'm traveling around the country. But up top here, I have a Step 22 Pangolin tool roll. I did a full video on how I set up my tool rolls for my vehicles, so I'll leave a link for that up in the corner if you guys wanna check it out. And then down here, I have a bag filled with recovery gear. I've got jumper cables, winch line extensions, even though I don't have a winch on this van quite yet. Got a tree saw, kinetic ropes from Dead Man Off Road, Factor 55 components, soft shackles, a ton of gear in here which will get me or my friends out of basically any situation. Now you can choose to add more shelves to this if you see fit. I think I'm just gonna leave it like this though. I could put my propane fire pit in here. I could mount my propane tank up to the mini Sherpa up there. There's a lot of things that I can do with this storage solution and it's nice to not have dirty tools and like smelly recovery gear inside of the living space of the van. And then when I'm done, simply close that up twist it to get the nice seal and you're ready to roll. So that is my complete rear end owl van setup on this van. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments down below and I'll try to answer anything as best as possible. I'll leave some links of where you can find these products down below as well. And you will see me using this van and a lot of the features back here in some future videos. So if you're interested in adventure van content and a lot of other off-road outdoor lifestyle videos, Consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.